Welcome to this tutorial on creating your own animated graphics. Uh, this is for OBS essentially, and we're going to be using DaVinci Resolve to actually create the graphics or to create the movie that we're then going to import into the actual into OBS, which also to go through the whole process. I haven't generated yet what I need to show, so I will go I will go through the whole process other than the building of the actual animation. So whether you're using uh, Blender or some other way of actually creating like a, an animation, doesn't matter what software you use to do that. Um, like there's so many different types, even, even Photoshop will do it, um, Clip Studio. Uh, I use a, a program called Moho Pro, <laughs> which is the one that I use to actually generate the, the graphics that I'm going to be using here. But Blender will probably be the most typical use. And it could be that you have a rotating logo or something like that anyway. So you basically build what you have to do in those in those programs. But instead of exporting it out as a movie, uh, which is quite often the way that you might sort of approach it, you need to export it out as uh, as ping files, as PNG files that will actually then also have a transparent background. And so this is my ping sequence. That's what it's called. It's a. Uh, it just goes from flaming flaming jester uh, underscore basically zero 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 one uh, through to uh, forty eight. So that's the number of frames that I've got. I've got forty eight frames in my animation. So as long as you export it out, but these are transparent. If I double click them, you'll sort of see that the white background that was showing up in this in this preview is not actually white it's uh, it is transparent so that's what we've actually got for those particular graphics i built these at a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels uh just so that you're actually aware again if you sort of uh, if i hover over any of these you'll sort of see dimensions a thousand by a thousand you can do whatever size sort of is suitable for you i need it fairly large for this first sequence uh, but i'll just go through in davinci resolve how to then go and change it so we'll open up a davinci Okay, so this is DaVinci Resolve 18. Um, now, this is the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, there, are, there is a free version as well, and I forget the limitations for what we're about to do. I think it may be frame rates or something like that. You, you won't have quite as much that you can actually do with the frame rates. Something along those lines. Anyway, you'll have to just experiment with that as you go. So let's just go to New Project. Uh, I'm just going to call this one Flaming Jester. Okay and create and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the media pool and I'm going to bring those clips across so I'm just going to navigate to where I've actually got them stored and so here they all are all the individual uh, clips that have all got the transparent backgrounds back in through here but this is not what we want we don't want individual files like if I start to bring them in I can bring all of them in but they'll all just be individual little ping files we need them as a sequence because we exported them as a sequence now sometimes it will sort of work for you and sometimes it actually won't now I don't know if that will actually do anything no, that's just giving me the information about the actual file itself. What you need to do to change it so that you can actually bring a sequence in is to go up to the uh, three little dots, go to frame display mode up through here and go to sequence. And so that won't then use the auto. I think depending on what program you export it out from, it will recognize it. But the name will now change into, well, we can't really sort of see it there, but this is actually now an actual sequence. You can see there when I sort of play or when I scrub through it, it is actually scrubbing through the actual flame, flaming gesture itself. So we'll just drag that down now into our area. And that now has come in uh, for us to now use as, an, as a small animated clip with a transparent background. So that's step one. We've now got something with a transparent background in DaVinci Resolve. It's critically important that whatever you do has already got the transparent background at this point in time. Uh, it's the easiest way for us to sort of then work with these with these elements. If we now go across to the edit page, I can actually a few things I can do here. If I don't like like this one is if I bring this one in, for example, uh, into here, it's only going to be a very, very short video. Uh, so it's just 48 frames. Now, I think I had 24 frames per second for my if I go to file project settings. Yeah, I've got it at 24 now. It's easier if we uh, if we change that right when we actually start it, if you've got something different that you're wanting to do. 24 is fine for me. I've made this as, as a two second animation with 48 frames. Uh, again, whatever you sort of want to do, but what I could have done at the start when I was creating the, the uh, project was to change the, frame, change the frame rate at that time. It's a bit more confusing afterwards. I won't go through the steps for that one through there. Now, this one here, what I do want to do is I want to change this to custom and I do want this to just be a thousand by a thousand. And again, I can change this down to other sizes if I wanted to. 
oops, not 10,000. Okay, so we'll just go and save that. So that then gives me like a square format uh, ready for the actual animation to, to come in uh, into it. Um, now that should be sort of pretty much okay. I might just get rid of it for a second. I'll just delete that. Whoops. And just bring it back down in again and just see if it's actually now sort of resized itself. It looks like it's right on the edge. I don't, don't remember it being that close to the edge before. So um, if I just sort of scrub forwards, does it come off the edge? I think we're okay. I think we're okay. It is actually a loop, like if I just go and, uh, and grab this, this well, you know, I'll just zoom in so we can sort of see it there a bit. If I just go and grab a few of these and then just sort of place them down through here, I can then just play it and you can sort of see it does actually play as an actual loop. Oops, eventually I'll just go across. Oh, why are we not doing that one? There we are. So it just plays as, a, as a, uh, an animated loop, a fairly sort of simple animated loop there. Uh, I'm just going to delete all these things. All right, so we've just got like the one little group. Now, if I wanted this to be faster or slower, if I found that that was a bit too slow, I can then just go across and either right click up through here on the actual element itself and go to clip attributes and change the frame rate if I wanted to from up through up through here. Again, I'm not sure if the, what the free version will allow you to do, but I can change that there if I wanted to. I'm actually happy enough with this one. I, I sort of was looking at the animation. If anything, it could be a little bit faster, but it'll, it will do for what we want in through here. So uh, that's going to be the animation. We now go across to the where the magic actually happens in the program. Now, when you're exporting out, um, you can see through here, I've got like a, by default, um, uh, DaVinci will actually choose QuickTime. I always tend to always just choose MP4 for every other sort of video. Uh, that's how I actually export ready for YouTube. But in this case, QuickTime is the one format that allows you to use alpha channels and alpha channels is the transparency. So we've got the alpha channel here from the uh, that, that came in from the uh, from the ping sequence. So we've actually got an alpha channel in this one. And so QuickTime, uh, which is sort of like an Apple version of, of doing this, is the only real format that doesn't sort of add its own background. So we can export out, like if we just do it in these settings, it will export out the background. But if we, if we go to QuickTime, we go to the codec, which is a GoPro Cineform, and then from the type, we then choose RGB 16-bit. It allows us then to export out as alpha. So let's just go and export the alpha out there. And so that was, and we've got the, the, the frame rate. Now we can actually tweak the, the uh, resolution if I wanted it smaller. I can sort of uh, make it smaller here if I wanted to. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add one that's full size to the render queue and one that's actually half size. Right, so this is the area that I save things into. You can see there the, the uh, sequence or the, the slideshow that we actually got with those two images is through there. This will be an MOV file, which is a QuickTime file. And so we're just gonna now go and, and place this one as Flaming Jester and uh, .MOV. Uh, this will be, I'll make this one a thousand PX, just so I know that that's the size of this one here. So we'll just go and save that. And so it's now uh, that's the that's all the all the things we actually need through there. The quality best high would be enough. I'll just put it on high. We'll add to the render queue for what we need. It's not going to really matter that much. There's the first one. I can now go and add another one as well. So I can just go and change one to say 500. Um, so we'll make this one 500 by 500. So the resolution will be a bit smaller. And uh, we'll add that to the render queue as well. So we've now got two jobs going into the render queue. Just one smaller, just if I, if I wanted to have it on, on smallish uh, pages. Could even go smaller again if I wanted to, like, you know, 300 would probably be a, a useful one as well, actually, when I think about it. So maybe we'll just make this one say 300 as well. Um, depending on the size that we actually want, and we'll just make this one like the 300 pixel. So these will be all the different uh, versions that we sort of need. We'll just add them to the render queue. So all three of these have been now added to the render queue. I just wanted to have like a bit of a, a, a selection in through there. And uh, we'll just grab all of those and render all. So we'll um, just do that. Off they go, rendered, 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 completed. And that was done in, in pr practically no time at all. So now we actually have uh, the MOV files. 
And so I want to add one to this image here. I will actually change the background graphics on this particular image. And I'm also going to go, when I, when I go to one of the other scenes, like I've got like a uh, screen inset for when I'm doing my chat tactic. So there I am. There we are. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be replacing this logo as well and putting one of the flaming gestures. And you see, I don't need a thousand pixel version there. I mean, it would still be okay. I'll just use the 300 and then scale it down for that particular page. So anyway, go to my hide, hide me scene. Uh, I'm just going to go across above the uh, above this particular slideshow image, and I'm just going to go and add. I'm going to then go to media source, and I'm just going to call this one uh, flaming gesture 1000. All right, and uh, then I need to just go and browse for that local file. Okay, now, by the way, uh, this is coming up with a no preview of, as to what we've actually gone in through here. Uh, this is because I don't have QuickTime installed on my computer. So if you wanted to test it first, you well, basically, if you're wanting to test it first, um, you might like you, you've got to really download QuickTime. But I don't I, like I've had problems with QuickTime on my computers in the past, so I don't install QuickTime. I just test it in OBS because that will, if it's going to work, it'll work in OBS. So just grab the thousand pixel uh, flaming gesture, but all three were sort of rendered. I'll just go to open, and so I want this one to loop. So I'm just going to loop it back in through there. Any other sort of settings that you actually want to put in there, just do it. So we'll just click on OK. And there it is there. And so it's now just going to come through. And ultimately, I'm just going to be replacing this one uh, with this particular graphic. And I'm then going to um, change the graphic that's sort of sitting underneath that one. So it looks pretty cool, actually, doesn't it? Like it sort of works in fairly well. Again, I could have rendered it with a bit of a drop shadow. That may have actually looked a bit better. I could have done that. So I could have had like a black that was slightly translucent underneath it. That's the first one. I'll just uh, go and sort of select something else. So that's the that's the overall look. So at least I've now got sort of like a, a uh, animated graphic there for when I do my live streams, for when I do want to just sort of uh, either take a break or just waiting for the live stream to start. And if I, if I now just go into screen inset in through here, same sort of deal. I'll just go to the um, above the, actually I'll do it above the display. Um, actually I'll do it above everything, I think. I'll just go back to the top of my little list in through this side, add it in. So I could just go and add another media source and just use the existing Flaming Jester. But let's create a new one and just call this one Flaming Jester um, 300. So we've just got a smaller version. And again, we just browse the local file, just go to version 300 and loop. It's important to do the loop if you've got like an image loop, otherwise it'll just play through once and then disappear. And there it is there in the corner. So I can now just bring this one over the top. Eventually, I'll, look, I'm going to have to change my graphics in through this side as well. I'm just scale it down to sort of suit. So it's about that sort of scale. Here we are. So ultimately, I will then change it. I actually wouldn't mind it going over the top of the um, top of the actual screen itself. It'll then just look a little bit more dynamic. So there we go, guys. That's pretty much it. Um, how to create a, uh, a transparent uh, movie. Uh, like So this is much more high-end than just using image, image um, slideshows. But that's actually how to create that using DaVinci Resolve. Hope that's been helpful for you. Um, as I say, the, the one thing I didn't cover this with this one was how to create the initial ping image sequence. But in, um, maybe I should show that, maybe just as a, how, far, how long does it take? It's under 15 minutes. <laughs> now, I did it with Moho, and you guys won't have Moho. I think very, very few of you will be using that. This is more for 2D sort of style animation. I'm guessing that most of you will be using Blender. Uh, to in, I'll just show you in Blender how, to, how you would then do that. All right, so this I'm just going to muddle my way through this just so we can go through it. Now, this is, of course, a Blender. We've just got the cube in there. I'm just going to delete the cube. We'll just go to Shift-A, uh, which will then allow us to bring in a mesh, and we'll bring in the monkey. So we've just got the monkey head. I'll just leave that one as the as the image that we're going to then sort of generate. Uh, it's called Suzanne, we can, which we can see up in the side through there. Now, if we render this one F12, if we just go up to Render and then Render Image, uh, you can see there that's the actual render through there. Now, if it's just got a solid background, it's not going to be a transparent ping. So that's not what we want. So we're just going to go across to um, 
and close that one down. And uh, so we need to then go across to, where is it? Is it this one here? Yeah, if we go down to across here to your scene, then go down to film, down through here and click transparent down through this side. Now, if we go and render the scene again, so render, I'm just clicking on the buttons rather than using the keyboard shortcuts. We now have like a checker pattern. That means that it's transparent. So this is exactly what we would then need to generate the, um, the ping sequence. So uh, we'll then just sort of get rid of that one. And um, I won't go through this one too much, but we'll just go into like the animation tab. Uh, we'll grab the actual, um, actually I might just get the, uh, this one here as well and just move that one across just so it's the light will be a little bit closer. Uh, and through this side here, we're just gonna go and uh, set up a keyframe. So with that one on frame number one, I'll just press I, uh, and we're just gonna go across to, I'll just go all channels. Actually, no, that won't, won't quite work. Just go into here and just go into insert keyframe. I'll just go rotation. So I just got like a rotation one and I'll just do this one over say the same same thing as what I did there, 48 frames. So, so I'll just go into this side again as well and um, I'm just gonna change the rotation which should be the Z, yeah. So if I just rotate this one 360, I'll just double click that one, uh, 360, okay. So that's now gonna rotate over the course of, it didn't take the, uh, the keyframe, hang on. Uh, insert keyframe, there we are. So is that gonna, yeah, that's gonna do it. So it's, we've now got an, a rotation of 360. Now it does have easing. I'm not gonna worry, actually, yes I will. <laughs> if I can remember how to do it. Um, keyframe type. Uh, no, look, I won't worry about it. There, like we would need to end up with um, not having the easing of the keyframe. Anyway, that's look for what you guys sort out your own animation with what you wanna do. That's what we're going to be exporting. Again, we could go back in and sort of change, you know, this, the um, the format, the different, uh, so we're not making anything quite this large. But from there, literally, all you do is you just go out to render, uh, render animation. Oops, hang on, where are we? Render, render animation, and then just, oh, hang on, it's rendering out. And then this one's actually rendering out by default a, a um, a mo uh, not an MOV, uh, an MP4. That's what it'll actually then be generating. So it's now got that one. Actually, it's rendering everything because I've got everything set up there. Sorry, I should have should have checked this one first. Yeah, actually, no, it was all here anyway. Just make sure that you actually it was it was creating like a, a, a group of pings. So what you need to do is you need to go like we were in the um, in this area through here with the with the uh, rendering engine to get the film with transparency. We then go down to the next one, which is I thought that was actually the scene. Um, as well. Anyway, this is the format. What is that one? That's the output properties and this is the render properties. So the output properties, again, change what you need in through here. Change the end to whatever you want. So in this case, it's going to be uh, frame 48. Um, I probably should really go to one more frame, to be honest, just to sort of uh, pull that one forward just so that it does then do a proper loop. Uh, so it's just going to go to one and then it will uh, end up going through the other way. So that's going to be the, uh, the animation. The, um, now, the other thing we need to do down in through here with your output, and I've set, I think I've set mine up for default uh, for ping output because that's what I tend to sort of be outputting all the time. So I've got a ping RGBA, and the color depth doesn't matter between 8 or 16 as long as you've got the RGBA. And uh, you can sort of also have like compression or whatever else you sort of want to have in there for the actual ping output. But that's the one that you need. None, none of the others, okay? So, I mean, you can do some of the others, but in, in this case, the, uh, ping, the, the ping with the RGBA is what we, re, what we require. And then it's just a matter of, of then just going out into render, render animation, whoops, render, render animation or control F12, which will then just output the actual animation uh, that, you, uh, that you just created, the beautiful animation. <laughs> which we won't really worry too much about. And so this is now just sort of uh, has now created that, that particular loop. And so that could then be brought into, uh, into, the, um, into OBS as well through the same way, bringing this image sequence into DaVinci and then from DaVinci exporting it out as a, um, as a transparent MOV file or a QuickTime file and then into OBS that way. I hope that made sense. Uh, we did go to 20 minutes, but um, anyway, it's relatively simple if you've got the components to do it all. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.